Here's chapter 13 of Lucky Lure at Arrow Point by Mary Dame. The next few days were beautiful. Mr. Craig fished and fished, but he found time to join in other things too. There was the day they packed a lunch and took the boat along the lake shore and found the spot where the wild raspberries grew. Even Minty went along, but he was no good at all at picking, and once he knocked over Jamie's pail and got soundly scolded. Another day, Jamie and his grandmother made the berries into jam and washed the stickiness off themselves in the lake. Jamie giggled so much that he swallowed some water, but he didn't mind at all. And two or three times, when he came in off the lake early, Mr. Craig would bundle up Jamie and take him out for an hour or so. Those were the times Jamie nearly burst his buttons with excitement. Mr. Craig showed him how to change a hook and change a lure, but Jamie had one very special lure, his lucky one. The fact that it never seemed to catch fish as well as the others meant nothing to him. Let's try your luck in the morning, Jamie, Mr. Craig suggested as he left Jamie at the cottage. Think you can get up in time to go with me? Jamie beamed and nodded his head. If Grandma will let me, he remembered, and he ran up the steps to ask her with never a trace of a limp at all. Bright and early, Jamie had his breakfast. He helped to dry the dishes, and he made his own bed without being told. He even filled the wood box to pass the time. When his friend whistled, Jamie was out of the house like a shot. Then he was back in again and kissed his grandmother and tore back out, remembering to leave Minty behind. Mrs. Turner laughed and sat down to enjoy a quiet cup of tea. Minty sat down too and sulked. It was surprisingly cold out on the water. Jamie huddled down in his warm red sweater and wrapped his legs in the blanket that he found on the seat. He sat on his hands to keep them warm, and of course he couldn't hold a fishing rod in them. The boat moved slowly along the lake edge. Smoke from Mr. Craig's pipe drifted over the water, and the putt putt the putt of the motor and the gentle slap of the waves were too much for Jamie. He went fast asleep. By the time he awoke, the sun was shining, and there were two nice Dolly Varden laying on the floorboards. Jamie rubbed his eyes, stretched, and almost fell overboard when he realized where he was. Mr. Craig laughed at him just a little bit. About time you started fishing, don't you think? The minto will be along in half an hour, and you won't have a thing to show Captain Jones. I never meant to go to sleep. Golly, please don't tell my grandma. She'd sure laugh at me. Mum's the word. Now what are you going to use, your lucky lure? Jamie nodded happily. He took the hook from the flat tin box in his sweater pocket. He handled it very carefully. There was still a tiny scrap of red flannel on it that his father had used. As skillfully, skillfully as he could, he tied it to his leader. Jamie watched as, reeling out slowly, the lucky lure skipped along the top of the water, glinted in the sunlight, and sank slowly into the water, trailing out farther and farther behind. Mr. Craig turned the boat in a slow circle, and they headed back for Arrow Point. The rod felt good in Jamie's hands, and his sleep had freshened him. He felt as if he could catch a whale, but all the way back to the point there was not a single nibble. Isn't it time you tried a silly silver, Mr. Craig suggested? That's the one I used for these babies. He pushed his catch with his toe. No, thank you. I think I'll stick with my lucky lure, Jamie replied gravely. Look, there's the minto. We'll just get to the wharf ahead of her. Jamie looked up. There was a tremendous jerk on his line and his feet flew up, but his hands hung on tightly, and with a tug from Mr. Craig, he righted himself. Mr. Craig kept one hand on the motor, but he inched his way as close as he could to Jamie, prepared to take over as soon as he tired. Jamie's face grew red and his arms strained. He's a whopper, he gasped, and Mr. Craig agreed. Reel in when you can, he advised. Jamie tried, but the fish was fighting, and it was all he could do to hang on to the rod. He hardly even noticed when they drifted even with the wharf. The minto was almost on top of them, but Captain Jones had been watching, and he kept out of their way. The deck of the minto was lined with passengers watching the fight. On the wharf, Grandma Turner had jumped right out of her rocking chair, and Minty was standing on the edge of the wharf, barking himself hoarse. 
Jamie wanted so Mary very much to land his fish himself, but he just wasn't strong enough. You take it, please, he gasped, and Mr. Craig shut off the motor and grabbed the rod. It wasn't easy for him either. Before the fish was pulled beside the boat, his arms ached like Jamie's, and perspiration dripped from his forehead. He was almost too tired to motion to Jamie to hand him the gaff hook and to put it skillfully under the fish's gills and haul him into the boat. What a fish! Such a cheer went up from the Minto passengers that it almost deafened them, and the captain blew the whistle toot, toot, toot. There was a flurry of picture taken, taking, and Jamie and Mr. Craig were helped from the boat, and someone took the fish and weighed it. Thirty-five pounds! It's almost a whale, Jamie gasped. And five pounds bigger than the one your father caught, his grandmother reminded him. Could we send him a picture, do you think? There really isn't time, but we can try. If Mrs. Turner didn't quite make sense, Jamie didn't notice. He was aching all over, but he didn't even notice the aches. His lucky lure had worked at last. That's the end of chapter 13.